Hello everyone, I am back with the last episode of Lost Spring. Until now we have learned that Mukesh, who is a bangle maker, he is full of hope and uh, positive attitude. It is because even though he is into grinding poverty, even though he is born into poverty ridden family, he is able to dream. On it, he is able to dream to become a motor mechanic. We know that it cannot be practicalized right now. But if somebody will come to help him out uh, and provide him with education, then certainly he is going to accomplish his dream. He needs support from society. He needs support from NGOs. If he will be able to get a good education, then certainly he will be able to shape his career as well. Students, in our last episode, we had talked about father of Mukesh, who is incompetent in providing proper education and proper food to his children. He very easily accepted the unbroken lineage of bangle making. All right? And uh, he doesn't want to fight against his uh, owners. It is because being a day-to-day -day laborer, all the hope and all the optimism has been destroyed in him. He doesn't want to work uh, anything extra from bangle making. He doesn't want to try anything extra. Okay, because he had tried once to be a tailor where he failed very badly. Therefore, he had no option except bangle making. And this, um, this is the skill which he had perfected in and this he had transferred this this is the art which he had instilled in his children as well and because of this art only mukesh and his brothers are earning little bit of money to become partners in survival and uh, there are ladies who are working in the furnaces okay but uh, married women who are wearing bangles and unmarried women who are making it the situation differs out here Okay, let me tell you more about the bangles when it is related with ladies. See, these multicolored bangles are a symbol of suhag or long life of husband um, and uh, auspiciousness in marriage. We Indians have not seen any marriages which are uh, without, which are performed without bangles. Okay, be it married ladies, be it unmarried ladies, they wear it. For married ladies, I have already told that it is a symbol of suhag. It is a long life of uh, husband. But unmarried women, they wear it because it shows happiness. It is a mark of joy, happiness. All right. So, uh, here when we see uh, very closely, we see Savita is also making bangles. But there is no happiness. There is no joy in her eyes. All right. So here we get to see that it is only a means of survival for ladies, be it married or unmarried. All right. And another paradoxical thing is that the ladies who are wearing bangles for the sake of their husband, for the long life of their husbands, okay, because of those uh, bangle making, their husbands' eyesight are getting ruined. Their husbands' health are getting deteriorated. So what is happening? Eventually, those bangles, okay, the bangles that ladies are wearing, because of those bangles, their husbands, uh, husbands are inching towards death. So this is, you know, paradoxical situation that we witness here. Students, another very important point that we need to notice out here is that Ladies are making very beautiful, very colorful bangles. But their own life is so miserable. Their own life is devoid of good health, uh, happiness, joy and cheerfulness. So, this is so ironical that we find here. Till here, it was recapitulation of last uh, story of Mukesh. Now, we will move ahead to complete the story. Little has moved with time, it seems, in Firozabad. Years of mind-numbing toil have killed all initiative and the ability to dream. Why not organize yourself into a cooperative? 
I ask a group of young men who have fallen into the vicious circle of middlemen who trapped their fathers and forefathers. Here, the writer says that there is only a hairline difference in Firozabad because there is no drastic change. It's been years but yet nobody has come up with uh, their plans, their rules, their regulations in order to improve the condition of Bengal makers. The situation which was then of Firozabad, it is same now as well. Therefore, there is hardly any difference that we get to see. And writer also she observes them very closely and uh, tries to arouse in them initiative and ability to dream and uh, she has a great sense of understanding uh, because she has talked with young and old males and females and she realizes that uh, here survival is very important and not the identity but for that they have to come out of the web of poverty. For that, they need to organize themselves. For that, they need a person who will lead their group. The person who is educated. Uh, for that, education is prime uh, element for them. Okay, After organizing themselves into a cooperative, certainly they can fight against unlawful behavior which is being meted to them. Here, Poor laborers are trapped in vicious circle. Okay, the vicious circle is that they have already a problem. That is problem of poverty. Okay, there is another problem. That is lack of education. If they will have uh, money, they can get, they will not be poor. If they will not be poor, they will be educated. Now with education, they can upgrade themselves. They can get good uh, jobs. And they can earn more money but here the problem number one problem is that they are uh, in abject poverty number two they don't have education and these two problems are interrelated let's move to the next paragraph now even if we get organized we are the ones who will be hauled up by the police beaten and dragged to jail for doing something illegal they say there is no leading there is no leader among them no one who could help them see things differently their fathers are as tired as they are they talk endlessly in a spiral that moves from poverty to apathy to greed and to injustice students in our society the problem crops up when rescuer becomes ruiner okay and here in the paragraph the writer is talking about a society where everybody is corrupt and we cannot imagine a society which, who is not intimidated of uh, elite people. Okay, It is because police are not supportive. Police are not taking care of uh, laborers. The police also turns uh, deaf air towards the pleading of these laborers it is because they are given commission they are bribed by these rich people these middlemen these businessmen these sahukars therefore they torture these common people so that they will not stand up together they will not unite and talk against these sahukars middlemen etc students leadership matters a lot Okay, if a group of sheep is led by a lion, they are going to perform marvelously because the quality of lion will be transferred to ships and they will perform just like a lion. But if a pride of lion uh, is led by a ship, then the contrary will happen because the leader is ill-informed, the leader lacks courage. Therefore, the quality of those pride of lion will be suppressed. So here we see because of lack of courage and because of lack of knowledge they fail in each and every aspect. Students, here we need to focus on this last line. It says that daily laborers like Mukesh, his father, his brother, Savita and that lady okay, these people 
if they skip a day's work they won't be able to have their food okay not even their family therefore keeping their family at risk they cannot think of having a cooperative and fighting against their uh, masters okay it is because they are ill informed because of lack of information they are not able to fight against them therefore they win against their poverty the rich people the middlemen politicians police and other people they keep on doing injustice upon them because they have to earn money from them if they will be educated they will stop working for them and they will not uh, be able to get cheap laborers okay they will their profit will decrease listening to them i saw two distinct worlds one of the family caught in a web of poverty burdened by the stigma of caste in which they are born the other a vicious circle of the sahukars the middlemen the policemen the keepers of law the bureaucrats and the politicians the writer out here is very much pain to see two distinct worlds the world of haves that is rich people and have nots the unfortunate lot okay and just like the two edges of a river just like two banks of the river they exist at the same place but they cannot meet with each other they cannot cooperate with each other now here when we see we find every city has two faces the bright the well lit and the illuminated world of the rich and the dark dingy miserable you know depressing world of the poor the poor exist not in the theme market but in the periphery and i saw that the uh, the society of rich will not be ruined okay and even they want to live in a standard way but nobody supports them but this is also true that in order to uh, maintain their glamour okay in order to maintain their fabulous life they have to depend upon these laborers these uh, poor people it is because they cannot do their own work uh, by themselves it is because they need people to polish their shoes they need uh, chotu to bring things from the market they need somebody to work in their kitchen they need somebody to clean their house all right so therefore we cannot imagine a city which is full of rich people it will never happen because rich and poor both of them have to coexist but the very pathetic situation is that they are not cooperating the rich people are not cooperating at all i don't disagree that they are not being paid wages even though it is low but being rich okay being um, educated they should take it as their social and moral responsibility and uh, they should take uh, charge of at least one child or one member of the family so that their burden will be less and then upcoming generation will uh, improve okay they will not have to stick to bangle making all right or rag picking so what will happen if one child is being taken care by one of the rich people of society then automatically child labor will also eradicate and they can have a wonderful future as well if elite people will take initiative then only let's move further now together they have imposed the baggage on the child that he cannot put down before he is aware he accepts it as naturally as his father to do anything else would mean to dare and daring is not part of his growing up when i sense a flash of it in mukesh i am cheered according to the writer a child worker like mukesh is uh, weighed down under two distinct worlds the first world is of poverty ridden family and caste stigma which forces him to compromise okay and second is the world of sahukars 
middle men, policemen, bureaucrats and politicians which exploit and oppresses them a lot. Okay, they uh, are given such a weight, okay, such a responsibility by which they cannot come out. They can never be free. Alright, therefore, the writer talks about these two worlds. But when Anish Jung sees spark in the eyes of Mukesh in this, you know, very trapped condition, she becomes very happy. The happiness of Mukesh's face cheers her up as well. Let's move further. I want to be a motor mechanic, he repeats. He will go to a garage and learn. But the garage is a long way from his home. I will walk, he insists. Do you also dream of flying a plane? He is suddenly silent. No, he says. Staring at the ground, in his small murmur, there is an embarrassment that has not yet turned into regret. He is content to dream of cars that he sees hurtling down the streets of his town. Few aeroplanes fly over Firozabad. Students, here we see unique quality of Mukesh. Okay, that we will talk in length. First of all, let us understand something else. Mukesh, like his peers, is born in a poverty-stricken family, in a caste of Bengal makers. Like all children of such families who are deprived of education, he was uh, also forced into back-breaking, mind-numbing uh, work in glass furnaces. But unlike his peers, his spark did not get extinguished. He was a rebel. Okay? He was an agitator. He dared to dream of a different life and wished to become a motor mechanic. This little boy is ready to surmount all the problems in order to become a motor mechanic. He can walk. He can learn from somebody. For that, he can uh, do anything. So he is so much passionate about his dream and someday, because of somebody's help, he is surely going to uh, achieve it. Students here in the last line, few aeroplanes fly over Firozabad. It shows us that there is a limit to dream for poor people. They cannot dream to become everything. Mukesh cannot dream to become a pilot. It is because that is not accomplishable. Okay, that, that is not achievable. He can think of becoming a motor mechanic. He can think of driving a car. Okay. But he cannot dream high in his life. Students, by this I have completed second story also. Let us compare two boys, sahib -e alam and Mukesh now. Okay, when we see sahib -e alam he was free while picking rags. But eventually he became trapped. But in the case of Mukesh, initially he was trapped. But he was dreaming to become free. Okay, this is the main difference. But the similarity is that the commonality in both the stories is that education can cure all the problems of human being. Students, just like Mukesh, even sahib -e alam had dreams. Okay, small dreams which he will be able to accomplish very soon if he will continue working in that tea stall. Okay, even though he is not happy, but economically, gradually he is going to be sound. Okay, his dreams were um, first, he wanted to own a pair of shoes, he wanted to go to school and become educated, he wanted to play sports and lead a respectable life. Students, there are numerous children like Sahib -e Alam and Mukesh, whom we see every morning and uh, in every shop okay providing us with uh, tea and other things okay but our past does not matter right how we are going to change our future that matters a lot and for that a person requires to be very adamant okay very firm and very determined then only they are going to change their future in this regard Anyone can take inspiration, motivation from former our former 
president dr abdul kalam who was a newspaper seller okay during his childhood but he became president okay he is also known as missile man of india all right so this is vivid example that we see and nobody can deny that so if somebody is very much adamant to change their life they can change it is all in their mind students after reading the chapter if we skip this very crucial aspect that is eradication of child labor then it will be incomplete the reading of chapter will, will be incomplete so what are the ways of eradication of child labor can we just say a, a small child to stay at home will that solve his problem no not at all according to me first of all we need to find out why the child is in uh, factories okay why the child is in shops why the child is working as a helper all right and uh, another very important thing that we need to see is that what led that child to take up work in factories and shops students i have made a list of things that we should do as a uh, socially responsible people so that we can curb down the social curse of child labor and the first point says right to education in india there is free and compulsory education provided to all the children who are under the age of 14 therefore there is no uh, money to be paid for their education so parents can freely send their children and get them good education secured jobs to parents see if children are sent to school that is not going to solve the problem unless and until their parents are having secured jobs because they need somebody to earn their bread as well so if they are satisfied with their job then certainly they are going to send their children for education and they are going to work for their future as well next is the one third number is stringent punishment strict punishment for those who keep children under 14 years of age for work be it as a domestic help or be it as a help for uh, shops okay if there is a fear of law among people then they are not going to keep children uh, for work and this is seen in uh, hong kong market of siliguri as well where the poster says child labor free market let's discuss point number four which says public awareness now people should be aware that why we should avoid keeping small children as our laborers okay it is because children are the future generation of any country they have ample of opportunities they have ample of capabilities as well to shape their future to shape their country's future as well number five is media and nobody can deny the significance of media in every aspect through media we can uh, threaten people through media we can aware people through media we can show that which laws are against child labor and what are their social and moral responsibilities obligations towards society okay number 6 says role of uh, government and ngos government has already done so many things for uh, eradicating child labor now ngos must come in front to find out whether the children under 14 years of age are being sent to schools or not now final one is realization of moral duties this point i have already discussed but again i am telling that being indian citizen we must think about our country as well by this i have completed lost spring i hope you understood it if you have any queries now also you can drop a message i'll surely reply to that thank you